In this lesson, we're going to take on a couple more examples of solving proportions. So first of all, we'll start with uh, this one on the left here. 5 over 9 equals 17.5 over what? Over x, right? We're trying to figure out what x is. All right, so we'll go ahead and take our cross products, set them equal to each other. All right, so that means we'll take 5 times x equals 9 times 17.5. Now, uh, in the last video, I really emphasized keeping your algebraic work, right, the work within the equation here, separate from any scratch work. So I can tell I'm going to need some scratch work here because I don't know what 9 times 17.5 is off the top of my head. But for my algebraic work, my next step is going to be to put my equal sign directly under my first equal sign. I'll rewrite the 5x that I haven't, uh, or that I'm not going to do any changing with, and then I'm just going to simply multiply 17.5 and 9. So 9 times 5 is 45, seven, 9 times 7 is 63, plus 4 is 67, and then 9 times 1 plus 6 is 15. Of course, we have one decimal point, so the decimal point gets moved over 1, and so 9 times 17.5 is 157.5. And again, like I said in the uh, uh, last video, if you have a whole number coefficient times your, uh, your x value, um, or whatever the variable letter happens to be, uh, probably the easiest thing is just to divide both sides by that coefficient. So my next step is to take the left side and divide it by 5 and that's only legal if I also take the right side and divide it by 5. So that gives me x on the left is equal to whatever the result of 157.5 divided by 5 is. But again this is where we take the scratch work and keep it separate from the main body of our algebraic work. So this is 157.5 divided by 5. So 5 goes into 15, of course, three times exactly. So we have a remainder of 0, but we'll drop that 7 down. 5 goes into 7 once. Have a remainder of 2, drop down that 5, and I better put this decimal point directly above in the quotient. And then 5 goes into 25 five times. So x is equal to 31.5. All right, this next example has uh, has some has a fraction involved. So we'll take a look at how to how to deal with that. So first, again, we'll take our cross products, set those equal to one another. So this will be 3 fifths x equals 4 times 3. Now I shouldn't need any scratch work here because 4 times 3 is a special product, so let's first just simplify that. So 3 fifths x equals 12. Now we have two options here. Remember, we can multiply by the reciprocal or divide by the coefficient. Now we can certainly divide by the coefficient of 3 fifths if we want, but you know, remember back to arithmetic, dividing by a fraction um, is kind of annoying. There's lots of steps involved. So whenever you see a fraction as your coefficient, my suggestion is to multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply both sides by the reciprocal. And the reason uh, I think this is better is because ultimately you end up multiplying by the reciprocal anyway if you divide by 3 fifths. But this, uh, just doing it at the very beginning, um, just cuts out a couple steps. So what I'm going to do is multiply by the flip or reciprocal of 3 fifths. So that's 5 thirds that I'm multiplying by on the left. 
And that's only legal if I multiply by 5 thirds on the right as well. And because I'm going to be multiplying 12 by 5 thirds, I think it's kind of nice to go ahead and turn 12 into 12 over 1. Remember, you can always put a 1 underneath any whole number. So we can see 5's canceling, 3's canceling, leaving us with just x on the left side. And then remember, pre-reduce if possible. So uh, we notice that 12 and 3 have a 3 in common. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So then 5 times 4 is, of course, 20. 1 times 1 is 1, but of course if you have a fraction of a number over 1, you don't leave it like that. You simplify that to simply x equals 20.